going to be on the CT side and phase on the T side, making some noise already over at the B bomb side, but it doesn't look like it's going to be a real push. They might connect through underpass and end up in middle instead with the rest of the team. We'll see how that works. No, in fact, the rest of the team is going to run through catwalk. Automatic missing a couple of shots. What a mini headshot, taking out one and automatic with a double. Shroud helping up as well. What a shutdown. Phase out of the round. Brutally so. But that's almost just like the fluky kind of set a setup really. I mean, it's just everybody hits their headshots on Cloud9. Everybody hits their headshots on Cloud9. And what can you do if you're phased at that point? You've got your strat, you know, you, you've got, you've thought it out, you're looking for the timing, you think you hit the timing, but if it's just headshots mid-air left and right, I mean, yeah, it's not gonna happen for you. Complete and utter destruction, phase, get bodied in the first round. Cloud9 pick up that all-important CT pistol round for a strong start, and so it's a 1-0 lead now for Cloud9, and Cloud9 actually Interesting. Three rifles and only a single UMP from them. Not really playing the economy game so much in the sense that they're not trying to be greedy here. They're looking to actually save these rifles as much as possible. I think I think what FaZe tried to do that round was actually very clever in that pistol. I'll try and explain after this one exactly what happened. I'll, I'll do some show and tell. Stu and Automatic are on the A bomb site and they do have some pretty decent weapons for it, including that UMP straight headshot on Rain. And he's gonna go and check the ladder right away. Good movement. And right now, FaZe are just all over the map. They have one smoke grenade on Carrigan, so well, they could try and set up the right smoke for a bomb plant somewhere if, they, if they're really lucky with it. But look at Stewie actually being aggressive. That's the captain down, Carrigan out of the round. Four, oh, sorry, three versus five here, and it's just looking good right now for Cloud9. This is looking very solid, in fact. Two-man advantage, you still have some nades to work with. You've, you've kept everybody alive so far. I mean, this is exactly what you're looking for if you are Cloud9. And it looks like FaZe want to go back over towards the B site. They're going to be a little bit more straightforward about this. They're just hoping with these Tech9s to be able to get close to somebody, take their head off real quick, get that bomb plant. But I like it. Shroud not going to give him a chance. He sets it up for automatic on short. And now the crossfire is established. And this is so difficult now for FaZe to crack. Not even going to happen. Not even going to come close, in fact. So here's what I think happened in the pistol round. Because there were there were three people that were coming in from the from the middle, right? These three terrorists are running in here. But before that, FaZe actually put two people up here and they were making a lot of noise. I think these two people making noise first is a way to try and pressure Automatic, who's playing here, to go and peek the middle. Because they want information to know if it's a mid-push, if, if these two people are going to be on underpass, or if they're going to keep going. So if they force Automatic to peek middle, there's three people running for him. I think the whole strategy is involved just trying to push that person into middle to peek. Well, why then, the question is, Andrews, then why are all three of them looking connector and window? Why is not a single one of FaZe facing Automatic? I think they were they were doing that before, and they were hoping that he would go in. Like, they, they wanted to push him all the way in the middle. They only encountered him at the corner, right? So at that point, they're thinking, well, then there probably is no one there. If he hasn't come and peeked, then no one is there, right? Um, so it could have been a little bit scary. Actually, oh. that's a very smart idea for FaZe. I'd love to see someone try that again. That can definitely work. Shroud gets a kill, but also goes down. Automatic taking way too much damage. The bomb is in FaZe. They've stolen from us, and... Even though they don't have armor, this is already a great round. That peekaboo. There's Stewie. One, two, three. No, he doesn't get it. Alu, he had it from Moss. Okay, fair enough. Upgraded the firepower. So far, a very successful round coming in for FaZe. In fact, three kills plus the bomb plant. Everybody dies, but that's perfectly fine. So three times they've hit B so far, FaZe. And sh worth pointing out as well, this is the first round where FaZe get any kills. They got three, and um, that's all they have on the team right now. But still, that shows you how powerful they can be when they get close. Their aim so on point to Cloud9. They've got to focus right now, because this is the big test for them now. Alu has the AWP, and they have two for masses still. Skadoodle will be picking up a rifle of his own, so we'll see. Yeah, this is the big round for Cloud9. Yeah, the AWP on Ska. And we have to see where he decides to take it, if it's going to be what we saw earlier, the kind of style that revolved around Cajun and Davkos kind of battling here on a ramp, or if he's going to take it into mid. This has been the, the, the problem for Oppers on Mirage recently. Over the past several months, in fact, it's just that it's so difficult to find an angle to work with CT Op to actually find a kill. Because mid is basically cut off, that short smoke, the window smokes, everything is so effective at blocking out Oppers now in mid that you have to kind of work around the extremities now if you're Opping, unless you get a lucky break and find something in mid. So Scott, this time around he goes aggressive palace, it doesn't pan out, and now he takes up his position over in CT, that long line over towards ramp across the A site. In the meantime, FaZe, they've left that bomb all the way back in T spawn, so minute 15 left on the clock, still a plenty of nades to work with, but yeah. no picks.
they were obviously expecting Cloud9 to be aggressive in this round, so they've just been waiting around now. Nothing is going to push the top of mid, and the timing is actually really good for it. He's going to find nobody here, which is already a lot of information to work with. For one thing, it means when the smokes start going down to the A bomb site, which they will any second now, he'll have a good idea of what's coming, and they should be able to rotate people. And the big thing is Skadoodle has to stay alive, preferably get a kill, but more than that, he can't go down. Oh, are they going to run the bomb back? This is elaborate, and now the problem is nothing's information can actually backfire on them. Uh, it's, yeah, nothing is going to be working underpass, but he's going to be in a perfect spot to close line phase. 30 seconds left. Phase are going to have to start running. Like, they, they, they're waiting way too long. They're cutting it way too close. What is going on? I have never seen anything quite like this. 20 seconds, the bomb is walking into B. This is working. Cloud9, they've left everybody out of the B bomb site. What kind of mad mind game is this? Carrigan comes pushing through and takes down Stewie. I have no idea what we just witnessed. A next level coming out of Carrigan, the newly minted captain of this team. They're going to get the bomb down with three seconds left. God tier coming out of phase right now. They just need to win the after plan. It's a two on four. I feel like they deserve it. Surely they can't lose it after such a brilliant start. AZ and Alua left, and they need to fight for this one. The bomb is only just down. It's way too early. AZ going to go down, and now Alu sandwiched in. He's going to be dropped. I'm so sad that didn't work. Unbelievable. It's just so ridiculously close. That's the main issue. You're working with such fine margins at that point. If if a, a single player, they had nothing in underpass. Like there's all these elements of this strat that can just completely and utterly go against phase with 20 seconds left on the clock. It's just the stupidest thing that I've ever seen and it worked so well. All of Cloud9, they bought it. The smokes that rain in from right outside of apartments, this is when it happens. You see, they're setting up for it. Those smokes that come in from the apartments, those are what really do it. Yeah, it's the it's basically the flashes that go off in pit. As soon as those flashes are going off and the two players push pit, that's when you see the rotation coming out of Cloud9. They think they think themselves, 18 seconds left on the clock, they have to be going in. It's just all over the place. But so far, the strong start. Stewie getting revenge for the last round. Two kills for him already. And it's a 4-0 lead here for Cloud9 with FaZe buying up in this round as well. So Cloud9 have a great chance now to shatter FaZe's back and to just start extending a lead here on the CT side of Mirage. Aggressive play from Automatic followed up there, but AC is the last one left. And they have the bomb. Nothing in Stewie know that. Skadoodle going to be put into play, taking out AZ. 5-0. and They only lose one person. And the economy for Cloud9 is really getting out of control here. Mm -hmm. Everyone doing really well. Because what it's been... Uh, it's been two rounds where, yeah, it's been mainly just rounds where they survive with three. Yeah. Six and oh. Oh, sorry, five and oh at the moment, but six round coming up here. It probably will be six and oh just based on the buying that FaZe are putting into, or maybe they, I mean, they could buy two AKs and then take nine armor on the rest, but I would consider that a pretty big risk. And even worse, now Cloud9 have two AWPs. It is a tactical timeout that's just ending for FaZe here. I can't get over that one round. Why did they lose it? Because at that point, they have no idea where Cloud9 are on the map. They're cutting it so close. They had no idea that two people had pushed into B apartments. They had no information at all to go off of. So you're just counting on getting the headshots at that point once you get that bomb down. And they lost two players so quick in the after plant situation, a four on two. It's just tough. It's tough. I mean, that to me, it was just FaZe cutting it so close. Like unbear unbearably close. Yeah. But you got to give it, I mean, there was some thought for sure. The fakes, I mean, there, there's definitely a different level here that Kerrigan is trying to explore. Yeah, it's like all of that worked out perfectly. And then they get in and get the bomb down. And then when it comes to the after plan duels, they just lose all of them. I mean, what do you do at that point? It's the doodle flick onto Alu. If not for the side of the window there, would have probably taken him out. It's also a bit upsetting that phase combined between them when you have six kills in total. And we're now in this, starting in the sixth round here. They obviously need more, they need rain as well to start doing something. He's going to be going down this round. Kiyoshima with a good eagle headshot. AC could be a tech 9 kill. Kiyo going to get the second one instead. Bit of damage being done, which I'm all right with. Yeah, at least you're you're having some kind of impact on Cloud9's economy now. 5-0 for Cloud9. And while Shroud and Scott look at this, double pick. Easy peasy, it's who's going to pull the trigger first. But they have two AWPs now on Cloud9 as well. Stewie, a very competent opera in his own right. So you can go ahead and hand that over to him. Seems like perhaps Shroud might be holding on to it, though, for that B defense. That is an option as well. If you put him up in B apartments and he just sits there and holds the angle, can definitely work as well. 
Interesting. We're seeing some depth here in the CT side defense for Cloud9. I like it. Things are working out very well at the moment for them, that is for sure. Skadoodle and nothing at the bottom of the scoreboard, which I don't particularly mind. Automatic and Stewie, I think, are the two people that I'm really interested in. And Shroud somewhere in the middle. Everything going according to plan A. He wanted to take up a position there, but the Molotov just burning him a little bit. Whew. Nice try from Alu. The dunk nade, though. AZ getting roasted again, and nothing will hunt Alu down. Excellent pressure here from Cloud9 at top mid, just completely shutting FaZe out. Now Skadoodle finds his pick on Kerrigan. That was a delayed one. And AZ is so low, it's going to be so hard for him to have an impact in the round. And Shroud getting the kill on Kiyoshima. I, my heart right now, is uh, bleeding just a little bit for Alu because that timing was unbelievable. Every time he peeked, Nothing would fall back, and the, the, the third time when he decides, right, I'm not going to play this game anymore, he falls back, that's when Nothing actually fully peaks to get the kill on him. So I just don't even know. Rain will find the first kill of the game for himself here. Carrigan is also at one kill, and obviously going to be a seventh round here for Cloud9. Wow, they're, they're getting shut down in the middle hard. I like it, though. This has been one of the major problems for in-game leaders to try and figure out how do you get mid-control now. It used to be all about the op. I mean, hell, Kerrigan's on the server right now, and he used to be what he would use, he used to just be able to hit that next level on Mirage in particular because he always found shots in mid with that AWP. So far, the teams have done a very good job of figuring out the smokes, the flashes, the Molotovs to block out oppers. So now it comes down to aggressive pushes from rifles, it looks like, with the incendiaries as well to just constantly pressure phase. AZ was never able to get comfortable up there. Rain seconds here and he's going to get caught by Stewie. So a good attempt, you know, trying to see if he can get close enough to maybe get the bomb plant down, which they would have needed if they wanted a full buy. I suspect they still will buy just because there's only one person who can't really afford it, and that's Alu. So no reason not to just try for it here, but this is a nice lineup from Skadoodle. If he's going to be on point with the AWP, that that is cause for concern, I would say, for FaZe. Certainly. 7-0 in the lead right now. What is going to happen to FaZe Clown? Where is where is the momentum going to come from? Because now they really need to start winning rounds. They need to string together quite a few of them, in fact. $12,000 on Skadoodle, and he picks up a kill there. We'll get the refrag, though. Easy from beyond the grave, reaching out. That's what I'm talking flames. about with those incendiaries. It's so hard to challenge mid connector. Shroud, though, instant headshot onto Rain or a big shot. He gets a second one as well. Automatic is going to rob him of the third, but Shroud holding the line shuts them down and be apartments. Carrigan going to be walking away, admiring <laughs> the uh, the carpentry for a moment, but um, made me wonder. I mean, they really do seem to be focused on B site. They're pretty much only hitting B here, phase. Nice shot from Kerrigan. Gonna catch nothing out at the top mid. He still has plenty of time to work with here. A minute left on the clock, but no grenades. So no way to really facilitate like getting out onto a site apart from just straight headshots. And Stewie's still alive over in jungle as well to watch toward a, towards a site, so. Man, Cloud9 have really shown up to play today. This is just all them all the way. At this point, it's even just a matter of kills. Whatever FaZe want to do, they're not getting enough kills to even do it. In any in any given round, they're not having enough of an impact on the scoreboard to realistically win the round. So, well, you're talking about a bunch of aimers on phase, right? They've never been really known for their tactical depth, and that's you know that's why. All right, well, we can get into that discussion afterwards. But Trout is going to go for the shoulder peak, confirms where Kerrigan is. Stewie had got the spot earlier on, and so Cloud9 played that situation flawlessly. But that's where I wonder: is Kerrigan overthinking things or overcomplicating things when? You know, perhaps his team, you know, they, they need a little bit more freedom to go out there and just hunt for headshots, right? Because that's when you think about, like, Keo, when you think about AZ, you know, you're thinking about heavy hitters who can definitely do damage if they're allowed to find duels. Yeah, it's a, it's really difficult, isn't it? To, especially from the outside looking in, you don't, you really don't know. It does seem like right now some of these players that, I think, you know, have we ever seen Rain be eight rounds and only has one kill? He's such a consistent player and he's such an intelligent player. Uh, even if you just give him part of the map to work with, generally he will find a kill somewhere. You know, he'll, he'll go and do something with it. But it's still I, the other thing is it is early days for Carrigan to enter this team. We can't expect you know that that he will just pick it up right away and be and be sort of god tier at it. So it takes a while when you're taking over a new team like this. But I'm definitely definitely sharing your concern at this point that maybe this is uh, this is some of the players being uncomfortable in their positions and not quite making it work. And this is, I mean, the T side here. They do need five or six rounds in the first half, and 
it's not looking like it's happening at the moment. No, especially, I mean, you have a half buy coming in here, so this should be a lock for Cloud9. Double AWP, full nades, everything for Cloud9. So they, this shouldn't be a situation where Cloud9 lose, especially considering the performance they've had so far. Nothing with the with the peek into underpass. We'll catch rain. That'll start things off strong. Alu and Palace falling back already, but that bomb is waiting on slope to make its way out. They're just counting on AZ with their lone hero AK to actually find a headshot here. The whole strat revolves around him. There we go. Gets one kill versus nothing, but Stewie alive in CT. Tries to bring it back. No, this is such a bad choice, really. Just AZ, as we talked about, one of the superstars on this team. Try and see if you can put him into play. Now they're being very passive. They're waiting, I think, for Kiyoshima. Maybe in the middle to pick up somebody, because he's actually sneaking in there. Automatic is waiting on Catwalk and definitely ready for that one. 50 seconds left, Kiyo. Oh, what a headshot. Taking down Automatic. That's the kind of start they need. Aloe hiding in the corner. The bomb has gone down. It's a three on three. Finally, a chance for FaZe to actually do something here, but they're dropping quite low. Carrigan getting the, well, Aloe getting the kill, but Carrigan helping out a little bit. Stewie, gonna pick up one, goes for the spray. Can't connect with the second player. And now Shroud all alone takes one and can't continue the spray. Carrigan helping out and FaZe to pick up the first round there. What a round. And Kiyoshima actually ended up being the hero in that one. Yeah, with the kill on automatic, this one right here. We get the replay, clean as it gets, boom, one tap. But I mean, after that, it just feels like perhaps a lack of communication on Cloud9 when it came to the retake to trying to get into that bomb site. Skadoodle alone, that's just a nightmare situation to try and walk out there like that. Tough, tough scenario for Cloud9 and a lucky break for FaZe basically makes it work off the back of a hero AK and AZ creating the space for his team to get onto the site. One to eight phase trailing on T-Side Mirage, but they have the buy now. And Cloud9 are going back to the basics, it seems. No double op set up here for them. FaZe will have a little bit of money if they, even if they lose this round, just because that last round was sort of, uh, they didn't invest everything into it. So they can still kind of make it work and they're going to have to buy anyway if they lose this round, just because they, they'll be too far behind if they start saving now. Cloud9 playing a very passive side here so far on the CT side. Not many pushes into even apartments in on the A side. You see Stewie's over there. He could maybe try for it, but they're, they're quite content, Cloud9. We're just waiting. They've had the fights in the middle earlier, and they've won them, but now they've just given up on it. Not going to try for it. A change of pace. Yeah. I mean, this is back to basics. Three on A, two on B, hard, completely giving up mid. This is risky business for Cloud9, because if you're not going to have any kind of early warning system where you have a presence in mid to get some info, I mean, Automatic is here. At least he has eyes on connector. But a lot of this is going to come down to hitting headshots here for Cloud9. I mean, I think Automatic must have seen that shot go out, so he knows there's a somewhere in the middle. But again, they're being very passive. Stewie so going to go and check the A ramp. He hasn't found anyone yet. AZ is in a very strong position right now in that connector. It's so dangerous when a T player gets this close in without anyone being able to spot it. But nothing coming in from behind. Actually, Skadoodle going to get the kill, but nothing was right behind AZ as well. Now the game is up. They should know this is a B push that's coming, especially Shroud going to spot that one on. The whole rotation is going to be coming in now. Very, very bad play from FaZe here. They're just a little bit too slow. Shroud picking up one automatic and nothing as well. Halo, 10 seconds. Oh, what a great headshot. But I think it's just too late at this point. Six seconds, and he will get the prompt down. That's quite incredible. Still falls to Skadoodle. I think by the time that AZ went down in connector, the, the, the clock started running on them really quickly. Yeah. Because all, they know at that point, they know all Cloud9 has to do is check the rest of the middle. They don't find anyone. And because Stewie had already checked A long, or sorry, checked A, a ramp there, it's a dead giveaway that it's going to be a B push. So I think FaZe needed to... They need to run at that point. Just run. Once once AZ's found, just go for it. Yeah, Rain having a bit of a tough time as well, not seeing anything else. He spent the whole round up in Palace, only to rotate back to B apartments and get shot in the face there. In general, when you see that man getting up into Connector, I mean, teams favor the A site at that point, because then you can set up a three-pronged assault onto the A site, right, where CTs, you know, if you get the smokes to block off jungle, you have that guy in Connector to get them in the back. Instead, it's just FaZe going for the B play. Stewie alone, getting caught. Skadoodle, though, one kill, two kills. Could get a third one as well. Somebody's close under window. Oh, trapped in the corner. Rain. Finally make it out. Alu going to be there to the rescue with the, a with the AK there. Three on three. Automatic. Very safe angle for him to take. It actually gets the leg shot on Carrigan. Okay, then. But he's kind of boxed in now. He's got that smoke now to give some room to shroud over on short. This is still just a little tricky here because now connector is open, and so it's so important that nothing stays alive that he doesn't give anything up.
They will get the boost in the jungle as well, Phase. So now they have some options going on to the A site. Kerrigan waiting to see if there was going to be a flank around. And Shroud boosted up. Spots rain. Easy kill. And now Alu, he has that op, so where is he going to try and take it? Because he got it off of Skadoodle earlier on. Nothing's still alive in CT, though, and there's no reason for nothing to peek out now at this point. Just needs to sit and wait. And the real problem is Alu has to do almost everything on his own here. Carrigan won't have the health for it. He doesn't have the armor either, and he's out of the round. So now the bomb has dropped. 35 seconds. Alu, now is the time. Your team desperately needs it. He's already spotted out. The warbang's actually coming through, and nothing. Going to come up with a big double kill. That's 10 to 1. And just a horrible reset here for FaZe. But like we did say, because they, they sort of won the last round based on a half buy, mm -hmm. they can still buy even if they lose here. Otherwise, it would have been a full reset. But they are they're just out of it right now. We're 12 rounds in, and Rain has a single kill. I, I, I've never seen this before, ever. Not from Rain. Rain is, again, one of those those rocks, a found, like a part of the foundation of a team. And certainly on phase, you know, before Kerrigan joined, I mean, he was always one of the standout players. So good in the clutch, but just so consistent. To, ha to see him multiple times, he's been struggling for a while now. To see him multiple times not be leading the way for phase is, is very interesting. Something has happened um, that is definitely impacting his play. In general, it's a change of positions, but... So good start for Stewie. Gonna pick up a kill, but he will be going down to Alu. Flashbangs are through, nothing into the smoke. Somehow not connecting with the spray. Now he's hiding inside. It buys enough time for Skadoodle to come in and pick up the kill on Carrigan. Three on three with the bomb down. FaZe Clan, it's now or never. They really need every single round from here on out. And again, every game matters in this qualifier format. Everything is on the line here. You have to make it to that major tournament. And look at Rain. He's already rotating back into T-Spawn. He's going for the really deep play with 10 health left. This could be genius or it could horribly fail. If his team needs him now, he's not going to be in position. Uh -oh. Kiyoshima goes down to Shroud and leaves Alu smoked off over at Ramp. Rain, is he going to be coming in? Where is that plant going to come from? Well, the defuse, Rain gets a kill, but he goes down. There's almost no time, and Alu going to pick up the triple kill. FaZe will win it, and definitely in part due to Rain. He saw it coming miles away, and he got that one crucial kill. Hats off to Alu, but I like this style a lot more from FaZe right now. The fact that they went for a very simple execute straight onto A, they relied on AIM to carry them through. Alu made all the difference. I mean, we're getting the end here, but he also gets a pick to start things off on that push. And I feel like this is almost playing just a little bit more to FaZe Clan's strengths, where it's just, you got you have crazy aimers on your team. Get them into positions where they're just gonna be able to take duels and not overthink things. Just get in Cloud9's face. And look at this, Alu, this is what I'm talking about. Now Alu has some freedom and boom, gets the headshot. Well, not the headshot, but he gets the shot on Skadoodle to start. That's an incredibly aggressive move that could fail in any one of a hundred different ways. But um, when you're this far behind, you just got to make it work. Rain will take out Stewie. Third kill of the game for him. He's starting to warm up a bit. That's Kerrigan helping out, taking out nothing. Shroud alone. One versus five. Phase that. It took a long time for them to wake up, but now that they are finally woke, we'll see if they can... Uh, bring it all the way back here. This could still happen if they get the next uh, ah, rounds, if they make it 5-10. Mm -hmm. We still have a game on our hands. We do. It's just this t the idea that um, perhaps, I mean, you get onto the CT side. It could be a situation like Envy, right, where players start to kind of just get comfortable looking for duels and less, less reliance on the T side, on a strong T side, just get into the CT phase. But... Um, Right now, Alu is playing at a very high level. He's got 13 kills. He's almost tied with Shroud, who's at 14. That in itself is great. Alu is such a strong player. And when they get to the CT side, you brought this up earlier, Kerrigan with the AWP. If they get the double up set up on phase once they get CT side, if they could have a lockdown. They, they are perfectly capable of playing that kind of game. So I would say Cloud9, I, they shouldn't be worried, but they've they got to keep the focus all the way to the end here. Now we go back to basics phase holding angles, knowing that Cloud9, they're just waiting to see what Cloud9 are going to do. Everybody spread out. Everybody looking for long fights as well. They don't want to get close to any kind of corner, or any kind of angle. And while well, both teams, it's almost as if they're frozen in amber. It's only Kerrigan moving on the map right now. <laughs> no, the, free, the stream hasn't paused. <laughs> so it's not frozen. We're not disconnected. Really? This is discipline. I mean, Cloud9, they just have pistols and flashbangs. They do have a pretty cool setup in the middle where they can, I mean, especially if you look at nothing where he is, he can flash into the middle over the wall with those two flashbangs. So if there was a big fight in the middle, that would that would maybe help out. Yeah, you see him setting up for it. It's a cool idea. 
but ultimately it looks like it will be more of a B push. Again, coming in from phase, they've run, they've they they have kind of rotated back towards A towards the end of this first half, but the entire first half at the beginning of it was pretty much just a B play show. That's why you know Shroud and Automatic definitely showed up for their team. They they got a lot of kills in the first few rounds of the half. Keo kind of dancing around here with Skadoodle, but this this should lead to a situation where we have Skadoodle wall banging Keo. Double headshot through the bench. Oh. AZ gonna catch Skadoodle getting greedy, but still Shroud is alive back here and he might be able to find something. Spoke too soon, and they managed to get control. Nicely done here, FaZe. Yeah, most definitely. Automatic gonna be going down at the end of it. I think maybe someone had just pranked Kyoshima and unbound his reload button at the end there, because he just refused to reload. Neither his Glock or the Mac 10, he just thought, I'm not gonna do it. You know what? Yeah, exactly. I don't need to. <laughs> just I'm eventually it backfired. I mean, it's not every day we see a USP double headshot wall bang through the back of the bench as well, though. Nice, you know, hats off to Skull. To Skadoodle. Not bad. Literally here in the studio as well. Not allowed to wear beanies or hats anymore under the headsets. It's true. Someone decided to enforce that rule and a lot of drama on Twitter unfolded. 10-4 is the scoreline. We're moving into the 15th round here. Last chance for FaZe to have an impact and what an impact it would be if they could actually make it to five rounds. Considering what a miserable start they had, mm -hmm. this would be quite impressive and nothing caught sleeping inside the A bomb site. Rain creeping his way in. Gonna pick up that kill. Stewie going down as well. What a great start for FaZe. It's finally working out. Rain has shown up and Alu catching automatic mid rotation. A double kill for Rain. He had such a horrible start to this game. Now he's at five kills and he's gonna get the sixth as well there. 10-5. This is what FaZe Clan need. They need Rain to step up in the second half. It's finally working out from here at the end of it. And there he is. I, I think for my money's worth, one of the most intelligent players in the game. Uh, I mean, there are very few players who have the decision-making skills that Rain has um, out of almost any team. So I, that's why I'm also shocked that he's been struggling at all. But now, curious to see what he can come up with second half. That's going to be the ticket, right? We're live. The countdown has begun for the second half pistol. 10-5 for Cloud9 on the T side now. They've gone for the swap, and now we get to see what they have to offer us here going into the T side. They only need six rounds. Boom, just like that. Six bullets in the cylinder. Six rounds for Cloud9 in this best of one as well. Best of one format through and through. You need three wins, three maps to go to the major. And so it's so important that these teams actually win these best of one maps. Oh, and look at the pace here. Cloud9, Stewie trucking AC and they continue through the smoke. Alu ready and waiting. He only gets one headshot, but he can't get the second one. Automatic will take him down. That's a four on three now with Kiyoshima being very low. And look at Automatic guarding the vent here, making sure no one can make it through rain. He's still in CT spawn and he needs to win a fight against somebody. He's got back up from Carrigan now. They need some strong one-click USP shots here. Otherwise, this won't work out. The smoke is up. That's going to force people out. Rain, can he hit them? Not just yet. Carrigan defusing inside. One more second. Carrigan, he's going to make it work for them. Phase. They lose everybody, but still win the round. Genius play. I mean, I'm just thinking that every th Cloud9, if you rewatch it, if you rewatch that round, it's, it is a very solid kind of way to approach the pistol as well. Stewie gets the first key kill, right? But then everybody sets up so that they're covering courtyard. They don't even worry about CT. They just focus on getting the bomb plant in the section of that bomb site that they actually have control of. And then from there on out, everything, everything goes according to plan. It's just Kerrigan gets the smoke defuse. And that's just brutal. That's just brutal for Cloud9 because they should have had that. They should have had both pistol rounds. They won their CT pistol, Cloud9. They should have had the T round. They should have been getting up to 13 rounds. And instead now, we've got a real match on our hands here where FaZe have got a chance to run it back. They absolutely do. Alu getting some help from Kiyoshima. He's on two health trying to stay alive in that corner. Stewie's got him pinned in for the moment at least. But um, good start for, Cloud, oh, sorry, for FaZe anyway here on the CT side. And that's going to put you on tilt, you know. Cloud9 knew that they almost certainly had that one. Nothing oh. being boosted in. Can he find Alu somewhere? Rain is there to restore order and connector, at least. That was a little bit greedy of AZ. Without any info mid, but Alu will pick up both remaining kills. Three kills for him. Definitely good for your opera to be picking up plenty of kills with the SMGs. It means that he will just have that stronger buy when it comes to it. 18th round, uh, and it does look like we, we will push for the 18th round. No, they're going to go for the buy. I was about to say. And I mean, they could actually buy, yeah, he will. So Alan will, will drop that from us to a teammate. He'll pick up the AWP himself, which is good news, because as you were pointing out, Cloud9 are buying in this round. 
I th I think this is a game that could go the distance. I think FaZe uh, looked worse early on just because they were off to a really slow start and they looked to maybe be tilting a little bit. I think they're going to be back in the game now. Cloud9, if they don't want to end up in overtime or something, they really need to step it up. Admittedly, Alu is doing most of the carrying. He's actually top tracking in the server with 18 kills, which is outrageous. But they need more than that, and they are having it phased. The rest of the players are starting to step it up here. Molotov out from Kerrigan. That's not at all bad. Going to put a little bit of health off of Stewie. He's going to be going down to Kiyoshima, and Kerrigan in the back line. Can't really get the kill there, but AC there to pick it up with a good double of the pass. An automatic get the kill on him. Skadoodle before planting, taking care of Kiyoshima. One on two for Scar. You always wonder which Alu is going to show up, bot Alu or god Alu, and well, it's pretty clear right now. Another key kill for him. Scott's been spotted, and Rain will pick up that kill easily once they figure out exactly where he is. And FaZe, well, FaZe will get it an eighth round on the board. So, this is where I was just a little bit worried for Cloud9 coming into this, is when you flip onto the T side, you know, how are how is it going to work out? Do they have the depth and the tactics? I mean, we certainly saw quite a bit of depth from Kerrigan with all the fakes and everything before they simplified their game and actually just focused on, on standard stuff. So, I mean, FaZe, you know, they're, trying, they're still trying to find that happy medium. Cloud9, though, are a team that have been kind of struggling on the T side. Six, I mean, six rounds on T side Mirage could be like just a gulf, like you're trying to jump over the Grand Canyon, right? You know, they, it could almost seem impossible at times. And so Cloud9 are going to need a bit of a lucky break here, I think one round that'll really fire them up. And I think that they need it early on as well, because once phase equalizes and we go to 10-10, then it's it's game on, you know? They're gonna be feeling really excited. They know that they had a chance to almost get knocked out of this game without getting anything said in the first half, but they brought it back and they definitely have the momentum right now. Cloud9, are they gonna be able to bring it back? Grenade on Shroud, not even a chance to make it into the bomb site, and that's a great clean up there. AC and Rain, Taking care of the rest of the round. That's 10-9. This is where the pressure is really going to start mounting on Cloud9. There's the timeout. Okay, I like this. The fact that they're going for a timeout fairly early on here. FaZe used two timeouts in the first half on their T side. And after the second one is when we really started to see things kind of come together for FaZe. Cloud9 not willing to let it go too long. I like that a lot. Don't let FaZe get ahead. Don't let them really start to pick up the speed. Just, you know, slow things down. Get that 30-second timeout in and have just a little bit of time to talk, especially going into a big round like this one where you're going to go for the buy. Right now, they will have a lot of money on Skadoodle. He's got 7,600, so he can definitely buy a, an AWP and everything to go with it. Question is, how are they going to approach this Cloud9? I'm very curious if they're going to try and fight for mid control since they were pretty good at keeping it themselves. They could try and see if they could challenge. We still haven't reached the double up setup yet for FaZe. I'm, I'm also interested to see if they're going to be doing that later on. But it doesn't feel like there's a lot of attempt at a mid control here for Cloud9. Just casually throwing in some grenades, then reconnecting over at the B side of the map. They're making a bit too much noise up here. I think Kiyoshima can hear that when he's down at the, at the catwalk, so they've got to be careful. Yeah, there's the smoke, perfectly timed, but it's not going to be good enough to stop Stewie from getting out. And Stewie wins the duel. Key shot there. Kerrigan gets traded as well, and Cloud9 just explode out onto the B site. Now they have the man advantage. Now they can get this bomb planted. It's very well done. In spite of the fact that FaZe had some great grenades, I mean, that HC landed right on two players, and they still made it through. Alu, this is dangerous. Skadoodle, perfect position. He read that so well. And AC and Rain trying to get out AC. Gonna have a limp for a couple of days there, shot in the leg from the sniper, and that's it. Cloud9 picking up an 11th round and the first one on their T side. That feels really good. Again, once it sort of spirals out of control, if suddenly phase up at 10 or 11 rounds, mm -hmm. you start to question yourself. But this is, this is gonna just give them some room to work with, I would say, early on. A deep breath on everyone on Cloud9 here. I would agree, I would agree. Hmm, let me see. Win. That 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 whole strat, I think, really relies so heavily on Stewie getting that opening kill, because that gives them the room to get out onto the site. That gives that kind of just starts everything off there for Cloud9. But it is a matter of Stewie once again just taking it all on his shoulders, getting out there and winning an impossible fight. I mean, half that spray is just like mid air, and then only then he's able to actually take the fight. I had a real clench moment there, but Cloud9 win the key round, 11 to nine now on T side.
They have all the nades necessary. Skadoodle now has his AWP, but you're right, Anders, because Kerrigan, as soon as he has that money, boom, double AWP set up now for a phase. Kerrigan and Alu both looking for shots, but Kerrigan's over on the B site. This yeah. is where like this is where it's so difficult to try and work that pop mid. Those incendiaries, the teams are too good. Automatic gonna chase a man into ladder room now. He just runs right into Keo and dies. No ch no chance of a refrag. Wow, that was really awkward. Because at the same time, it's hard for him to fall back from that position. AC will find Shroud now. Five versus three, and Kiyoshima. He's been quiet as well, but now he's stepping it up with a double kill in the round, and nothing. I think now you have a minute and 10 seconds. Just go and look for as many kills as you can. Slowly and steadily try and see if you can pick up any damage here. This is going to be the first one, Rain, going down. Flashbang out. There's a second one on AC. This is very expensive now for FaZe. And he needs to keep going. It's important that he gets as many kills as possible, even losing round. Kiyoshima to end it with a triple, mm. which is not bad. Going to put him at 10 overall. 10, 11 as the scoreline as well. And the money for Cloud9 is not quite there. So No, they're feeling the pressure right now, Cloud9. And that round kind of says it all as well. After how close it was in the last round, it worked out on B. Stewie found the opening kill. This one, it's just automatic. Tried to force things. Tried to hunt Kyo down, but... Messes up the timing somewhat, and that comes back to bite them. From there on out, Cloud9 just get pummeled into the ground. Keo even feeling so confident to go for the second, like, super greedy peak up the top mid. So, I mean, you have to be careful right now, Cloud9. FaZe are definitely finding themselves. Well, you can't count on Stewie to win an impossible opening kill every single time either. No, that will always be a problem, and I'm still wondering why... Cloud9 haven't been more aggressive in their mid takes. They they seem to be relaxed for the moment. This time they only have the pistols and no armor, which is why they're taking quite a bit of damage from those grenades. So this should be the chance for FaZe to equalize the score finally, which is I think it's always a feel-good moment when you've been as far behind as FaZe were in the first half. Yeah, five round. I mean it ended 10-5 in favor of Cloud9 going into it, and they very narrowly lost the pistol around Cloud9. This could be a totally different story. But instead, it's FaZe nearly tying it up. Down around. Kerrigan could miss the shot, but that opens it up for Keo to go for a mad spray. Picks up two kills. And well, now it's all about getting the bomb plant. Can they achieve that at least? Skadoodle, does he have the bomb? No, it's automatic. And the incendiary actually buying some time, but he looks like he will be able to manage it. Kerrigan, what are you doing? He gets the kill in the end, but he walks right past him. <laughs> all right, that's just, you got to giggle at that one. That is so funny, isn't it? I think actually uh, FaZe were laughing at that one too. That looks so funny. I wish we could see that from his perspective. He was tunnel visioned looking for the other player. I think Carrigan also plays in 4-3, so I don't think he can actually see him, even though we can sort of see him at the corner there. I don't think he's realized, so that's interesting. Triple for Carrigan regardless. Yeah, I mean, that could have been even more awkward, couldn't it? It's just a lucky break for Cloud9 that they were able to get the plant, because otherwise Kerrigan denies the bomb plant, that's it. You're roasted if you're Cloud9. You don't have all these incendiaries. You don't have full nades to back up the AKs. Ah, bomb is hit. All right, so short smoke goes down. We're gonna have three players top mid here for Cloud9. And it's looking like they might want to just go straight through connector and get a very quick pinch onto the A site. Yeah, finally an attempt at mid control here for Cloud9. I love it. This is what they haven't done for a while now. AC gonna be going down Stewie with the opening Carrigan on the bomb site. Caught in the middle of everything and Shroud will take him down. That's five versus three here. And also Mantic shooting Alu in the back as much as he's been carrying. He can't be expected to get that kill. And now Rain and Kiyoshima, three versus two. Oh, sorry, five versus two. And what could they do with it? I mean, they have the money to buy even if they lose this round. But actually, I would still try and save it just because it, it just isn't worth it here. What a big round for Cloud9. They need to continue, though. Winning one round every once in a while is not enough. They got to string a couple together here. All I can think is let Stewie go first every time. Just just let him run into situations and find those kills because he seems to be so good at it. Shows no fear. He still has that confidence. And well, that's a, that's a key round again here for Cloud9. This is definitely going to throw FaZe's economy for a loop. If they can save one of those ops, if they can get back in here and save one of those ops, that would be nice because then Keo doesn't take such as big of a hit. But with three players having to rebuy here, Cloud9 are finally going to be able to put a little bit of a dent in FaZe's economy because FaZe's economy is still pretty solid. Three guys with over 7,000. This will be a pricey round, though. So they're not out of it yet, Cloud9. Showing some fight here. 12 to 11. 
but again, very straightforward approach, just like the, in the last round where they were successful when, when they pick up their 11th round, Cloud9. Very straightforward. B take. Stewie throws himself out the window and finds the opening kill. Here, it all hinges on Connector and them getting control of Connector to push onto A. And again, Stewie finds the opening kill to, to create the space there. Setting up similarly as the last round where they got two people in middle and they're putting out the grenades, but where are they going to end up? You can try and get mid control by having, you see Shroud here going through underpass, so they're just making sure that FaZe don't know too much about what's happening in the middle right now. Well, with so much time left, Skadoodle and nothing, the bomb over at the B bomb site. It could go either way at this point. It doesn't even have to be a B push yet. Uh, it is looking like it's going to be that, though. It's Stewie taking point on short. Spots Keo going right. He spots a man on Plateau as well, and that's going to cost him. Skadoodle's still going to find the kill on Kerrigan, but there's still a man alive, and that's Keo. He gets shot in the back by Automatic, and there's the guarantee. Cloud9 with the man advantage now, with the bomb plant happening on the B site. And Shroud in a genius position right here. It works if they try and retake. He can shoot them in the back, and if they try and fall back like they are, Alu jumping in. That's the AWP gone. What a... Brilliant round coming out of Cloud9. And honestly, the timing for Tomatic hiding in the smoke and then pushing through and shooting um, Kyo or Carrigan in the back was just really Kyo. well done. You got to give it to a uh, little bit of a lucky break there for Kyo, honestly. The Stewie spots Carrigan, but he was looking for Kyo. He was hunting for Kyo. Uh, Stewie would have caught Kyo with a nade in his hand, and that would have been brutal. All right, we're getting into it now, boys. 13 to 11, and FaZe call another timeout. This is their third timeout. Kerrigan is an in-game leader who loves to call timeouts. He's even trolled people and called five timeouts before. So, I mean, <laughs> this guy, he is not going to let it go the distance without trying to slow down the pace and talk to his team, figure out what isn't working in the setup, because now they're finally under pressure here. Yeah, and they have a weird economy going on. You know, Rain has 7,000, so obviously he can invest into this round and just drop some pistols for teammates and everything else, but the, but the rest of the team can't really buy. So they're going to go halfway there. Three deagles so far, 5-7 on the Alu. Carrigan, I'm not sure. All right. There we go. There we go. This, this, this That timeout deserves a shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> so All right. Let's get the energy up. I mean, I, that's what I'm saying, because I... There's so many times where you watch teams that are struggling and they just don't call for the timeout. You have four of them. Just call for it. Take a breather. You don't even need to talk. You can just sit there and breathe for 30 seconds. That was quite a good flashbang being thrown from, I think, Skadoodle in that A-bomb side. Shroud couldn't do anything about it, but they actually caught everyone in the A-bomb side, so it's not, not bad at all. But they should know, Cloud9, what the economy is like on FaZe. So they got to be careful, obviously, of the one deeks. On this map especially, there's so many positions you can take up. It's been done multiple times. But uh, if they can just get the opening frag, they should be good to go. And those grenades will help them get closer to the deals. Just make sure they don't get picked off at a distance now. Stewie walking into Connector. Rain going to be here. Can't get the flick in time. That's the opening that they need. Shroud having a weird fight with Alu, but he's going to be worried about someone walking in behind him. Getting a bit of backup from AZ, who was over at CT spawn, but a second kill following through, and it's all looking groovy here. Even with these two kills coming from base, it's just too late. Skadoodle will end the round, and it's a team ace for Cloud9. 14-11 is the scoreline here. Now FaZe can make no mistakes. They have to play flawlessly from here on out. Exactly, and that's you just heard it from Kerrigan as well, you know, the shout. Let's go. He needs to get his team fired up because this is it. Their backs are to the wall. They need five rounds in a row here to secure the first win for themselves in this uh, Swiss group stage. If you're not familiar with the Swiss group stage, I mean, if you check social media, I think that uh, E-League are tweeting out the format for it. But yes. boiled down to the bare bones basics, you need three wins to go to the major. And if you have three losses, that's it. You're going home. So one win here is so valuable. Carrigan actually got tagged in. Shroud looking for the aggressive opening and very nearly got it. That would have been a horrific start for phases. They dodge a bullet or at least halfway there. Let's see if they can find a way to retaliate. They've got AZ and Alu. I wouldn't even say they're controlling the middle, but they're sort of having a presence there without having any real information about what's going on. I wish that someone, again, I'm not sure why they aren't being more aggressive on the CT side here. Not necessarily even in middle, but just somewhere. I'm watching to see. I mean, automatic again. We saw some. This is a successful kind of position from them for Cloud9. But this time they've changed it up. They've got Skadoodle there. 
I mean, this is FaZe having to be very careful. They have already lost Kerrigan, at least as he's down at 36 HP. He's been banged up a little bit, but nobody wants to be the first team to make a mistake. They know how important this round is. And there you go, AZ gets rewarded for his patience. He was thinking about going for the peak, but Stewie jumps right into his crosshair. An imperfect smoke allows for AZ to spot him. So a bit of like an unforced error, basically, from Cloud9, allowing FaZe to have a way back into this. Now a man advantage here for FaZe. But it does look like this is going to go towards that A site. Smokes and Molotovs raining in. And they have three players here ready and waiting to greet them. They still have a good setup, actually, Cloud9, because FaZe are in such a weird position in this bomb site. Rain gonna get picked up as well. Automatic catching those, they rotate in. AZ now in jungle, but they're a man down. Eight seconds left. Can they get that bomb plant in? Finally, it's gonna happen. AZ picking up a triple, though, and now nothing in Shroud. Can they hold on? If they win this round, it's gonna be huge. AZ out of the round, and now Kiyoshima. One versus two. That Molotov is near perfect. Nothing has to be forced out, but the flashes go in. He can't capitalize on it. Kiyoshima, he needed that kill. Now he's in so much trouble. The bomb is planted behind the box, so if he can get the kill on nothing, at least Shroud will have a hard time getting in there, but just shoulder peeking, nothing playing this one. Great routine on him. It's really well done, and there's a headshot as well. Nothing with the triple in return, and that's 15 to 11. Great combat. That's a four on five. But the positioning from Cloud9 is so good. It's be the reason they can win this round is because they have the two people in connector and FaZe can't really counter that. Those two connector players coming out so good. I'm just surprised at uh, Skadoodle. That's like my one, the one hitch there is that Skadoodle ends up going for the challenge on the man in jungle when Shroud is already in connector to kind of hold that guy locked in. So that was like that one chance where FaZe had a chance to get back into that retake. But you're right, nothing in Shroud, they play that perfectly, down to a T, nothing Keo could hope to do. So now it's a force buy with an auto shotgun from Alu. Okay then, for FaZe, and Cloud9 fully bought up, of course. And he's playing it aggressively over at the A hallways, just hoping that someone's gonna come look for him eventually, but everything is on this here. They have so little to work with, FaZe. They almost have to take a risk. And they, they haven't really been doing so. Now, Rain is finally pushing into the A slope. I love seeing that. AZ will open up on nothing. And the smoke up here will allow him to just walk past. Trying to find the edge, in fact, see if he can look through that one. Now, the push is going to be coming into the B bomb site. Kerrigan and Kiyoshima way in the back of the site. Kerrigan with the front mask. Going to pick up an easy kill there on Shroud. It is looking good for FaZe right now. Automatically, the only one to trade anything so far. AZ, another triple for him, leaving Stewie alone. Nothing he could do at this point. Oh, the shots. 45 seconds left. There's the first. Looks for the second on Kerrigan. There's the wall bang. Okay, then. Bomb is still out in the open, but Stewie can still make this happen. He's got a smoke and two flashes as well. And the edge. 35 seconds left on this clock, but little does he know that Rain is pushing in from B Apartments at the perfect time to catch him. Blanked, and it's going to be an easy shot for Rain, but Stewie, unreal first two kills there. He really made that look competitive for a moment. It's just he's so focused on Kitchen if he just thinks that perhaps the flank could have come in. Brutal. Because if he gets the shot onto Rain, that's it. It's over. Like, Stewie's got it in the bag. AC's playing out of his mind right now. He's really stepped it up. He's even overtaken Alu here at 22 kills. And automatic at 24. Skadoodle at 21, which is exciting. Feels like it's been too long since we've seen Skadoodle really put up the big numbers, but he certainly is right now. 28th round coming in, aggressive push coming in from AZ, and that will be a great opening frag for them. Perfectly done as well. You take down the basically Cloud9's MVP at this point. Kerrigan going for the check, just running boldly out into the open. Okay, then. Ballsy bit of play there, but you take down Stewie, and now, well, this is tough for Cloud9. Down a man, and they've lost their heavy hitter. Skadoodle, gonna try and cross the line, not quite. Yeah, four versus five. How are they gonna get the kill to get back into it? The thing is, if they do get a kill on B bombsite right now, it's gonna be interesting to see whether or not Rain will rotate too quickly out of A, because if he does, he's gonna get shot in the back by nothing. This is the setup that they have going on. They could also end up making it an A push if they wanna take automatic down into underpass, which they're kind of doing right now. I'm very curious about where this is going, Cloud9. It seems like one of those plans that might be too elaborate even for your own team to figure out. Nothing will get the kill on Rain. The timing is there for it. Now it's a four on four, but Kiyo and Alu bringing it back in style. 
We're down to 38 seconds. They know that there's an AWP up there in B apartments as well, so there's no reason to peek. They know that Skadoodle's up here. Kerrigan is going to be the guarantee, but not much of one. He gets picked off immediately by Skadoodle. But still, with 27 seconds left and the bomb dropped on the other side of the map, impossible situation here for Skadoodle to make work for himself. And there's the shot. Keo actually just goes and hunts for him. Greed is good in this case. But this is, this is, yeah, they're just spread out all over the place. And unfortunately, Automatic not able to hit that timing up connector to really capitalize on nothing, creating the space on a site. I think when you play like this, when you're a man down and you're Cloud9, it's, it's actually quite smart because essentially what they're doing is they're taking positions on either side of the map. And, and as soon as they get a kill on, it doesn't matter if it's on one or the other, mm -hmm. they are waiting for someone to rotate. They're hoping that the, the kill itself will trigger a rotation on the CT side, and then they can pick up more kills and sort of keep going like that. The real problem they were facing is that the two people playing in B bomb site were playing it very smartly. They weren't exposing to themselves to those hallways, otherwise they would have probably got picked off. So they were just being very patient over at B, and that kind of threw a wrench in things for Cloud9. Now, we could very well be headed to, to overtime here. We've got 15, 13, and I don't know. The money is just not there for Cloud9. They can't buy anything. Yeah, we're going the distance. On the phase side, it's AZ and Alu in the middle. Really one flashbang here on nothing. He's going to cut the rest of his team. We'll see if he can, uh, if he can make it work. They're certainly going to try, and they have a Tech9 as well. Well, there's a flash on nothing at least, so there it is. The ghost signal, the flash is perfect, the Keo is still there. Drops Stewie immediately. Well, this is definitely not panning out for Cloud9. Unfortunately, Keo's just too good right now with that M4A1, just wreaking havoc. Triple on Keo. 14 to 15 is the scoreline here. We're going into the 30th round. This is when it gets really tricky for Cloud9. At one point in that first half, they had a 10 to 1 scoreline lead. It was 10 1 in the first half in favor of Cloud9. And then FaZe came back and they won four rounds in a row in the first half, ended 10 5. And suddenly it's back. It's to the very limit. Un unbelievable here. FaZe really sticking with it. And now Cloud9, all AKs. It looks like they might try for another pinch on the A bomb side. This worked once for them where they got the kill on Connector and they managed to make their way in. But this time it's a much more aggressive setup from FaZe. Those Molotovs raining in though. Gonna make life hard for AC, and he couldn't actually cancel it out with a smoke either. So he has to stay behind. And well, this this was effective last time because Stewie found the kill. This time he gets obliterated by Alu, who holds the line. Two kills for Alu. And now it's automatic. He does catch Rain out of the open. Longest spree of his life. And Skadoodle will eventually get the kill, but this is just so sloppy. This is all over the place. And Alu with a well, with an ace. <laughs> Unreal. Every single angle being held there. An automatic, the crab spray, long range. Not exactly easy to pull off. That's 15-15, ladies and gentlemen, and we are gonna go to overtime here. What a way to get started here. It's only day one of this qualifier, and it's only the third game of day one, so if you're just joining us, you're perfectly in time for a lot of really cool action. And again, everything is on the line here. There's not gonna be any semifinals or quarterfinals or finals in this kind of format. Every game is, is really Crucial. important, equally important, all of them. MR3 10K as well is the format for the overtime here. So we're looking for the first team to get to 19 rounds, and you're starting with $10,000. So it is key now for FaZe to win this first uh, this first round of the half so that they maintain their money for the next two that are coming up. Nice shot there on a Skadoodle. Good prediction coming through from AZ and Connector, just doing a little bit of damage, but the rest of Cloud9 ready to spring onto this B site. The problem is there's three players here ready and waiting for them. Yeah, but if they get through, they can smoke off two of them. Both Kiyoshima and Rain could be smoked off on Catwalk. That could leave Alu alone. A lot rides on him, and he's been carrying more than just his weight so far. But he could be put to the test right now. If he misses the first shot, then I'm not sure his teammates can be there in time, or at least there's a chance that they won't be. We'll see how the grenades are going to land, especially on Catwalk. Those are the really important ones for Cloud9. They need them to make sure no backup is going to be there. The flashbang near perfect on Alu. He is in full retreat right now, but Stewie gonna be going down. Rain, he made it there on time, and he's gonna pick up a great double kill. That really helps him out now. It's a two on three, automatic. Bit too much noise, and now AZ knows. Exactly what's going on, and AZ's gonna find the shot on Shroud as well. So pretty much hit automatic now. In an, I mean, in a 1v2, with 45 seconds left here to work with, and so it comes down to how patient Keo is. And Keo not patient at all, goes for the peak. So 35 seconds left on this clock. Kerrigan only with the HE. Might be able to pick up another one here. 
but he's going to peek out into the open, and Kerrigan finds a shot on Automatic. So, wow. unfortunately for Automatic, just not able to get the clutch. So just to point out, the, the whole the whole idea is when you have two people like FaZe did who are over by Catwalk, the problem is it's very common for a B-push to have smokes landing here or even here. So this whole place is going to be smoked off. And when Allo is the only player on site, and when he got flashed like that, it could have gone horribly wrong. It's because Rain makes it back in and actually gets the kill on two people here. That's such a big play for him. If he didn't make it back into the B-bomb site, Alu would have probably been run down. It's over. They even had four players there, FaZe. They'd even rotated an extra one in. So it's just like, FaZe, that it gets to a 1v1 when you correctly predict the play coming in from Cloud9 and have the extra man over there. I mean, that's, that's wipe the sweat off your brow, you know, shake your arms a little bit, you know, shake out the nerves because that was way too close for comfort. Cloud9, though, they're not done yet. 16-15, FaZe winning the key round here for your CT half. That first round, which will settle their money for the remainder of this half. So much pressure on both teams. Cloud9, again, we have to remind you, with a 10-1 lead at one point, now they could end up losing in overtime. Kiyoshima gonna be able to kill, good return, but then comes AZ with a headshot on automatic, and I think a grenade landed on him as well, so he was definitely dead. Shroud are gonna be going down, AZ is doing all the work, and then summon Rain. Cleverly hiding in the background, he hears one, he hears the second one, they're not even checking it. Rain, mercilessly gonna come through with a kill there, and now nothing. He realizes he's trapped here with the bomb down as well. He's going to get the headshot, but it won't matter. Alu to pick up a kill as well. 17 to 15, two more rounds for FaZe, and they will win it in overtime. And Alu's at 29. AZ, who we have on the screen here, 26 kills. Just a really strong performance on both these players. Yeah, AZ has definitely woken up a bit here. Shot. And another one. Boom. I mean, it's just these are such so important, basically making such a big difference when you get multi-kills like this in the round. He's also playing his favorite spot. I mean, Kerrigan at least is doing that for AZ. He's given him the spot on the map where he feels most comfortable on that CT side, right? And look at this, aggro underpass straight up, like just not wasting any time, AZ. And Alu in the meantime watching top mid because he has that AWP. Spray coming through, actually automatically getting the headshot there, but Alu will get the refry. That's 30 kills for the finish player here. He is reaching a godlike level right now, and it's been quite a while since we've really seen that from Alu, but it's definitely happening at the moment. Automatic trying to play for his team here. If he can win this fight against Rain, that's going to be big. The flashes are through. Rain too close to get flashed, and he ends up getting a double kill, taking down Shroud as well. That's Skadoodle and Stewie left here. This is so good for FaZe. The bomb is down, yes, but there's almost no time here for them to really hold it. Skadoodle somehow picking up a double kill with the Tech 9. How is it possible? Now it's all on Alu reaching through. Skadoodle with the triple, saving Cloud9 and winning that round, the last of the overtime half here. I don't know how that happened. The bomb had only just gone down. That was what I was trying to say. They had, they had, I mean, only just planted the bomb. They had to hold that bomb forever and ever, and still they win this uh, two versus four. <laughs> Skadoodle, what a hero! And while well, Rain was so low as well, Stewie finds with a shot on him and CT in the meantime. But you're right, Scott, the hero comes through one of the most important rounds to keep his team's hopes alive here. If they get the perfect CT half cloud nine, they can be picking up this first map. But we again are looking for the first team to hit 19 rounds. And I mean, this is by far the closest. I mean, the first two maps of the day that we had, Dignitas versus Spirit, it ended 16-11 for Dignitas. And Envious versus Immortals, it was 16-11 for Immortals. And neither of those maps was particularly close. This now is going the distance, a very even matchup between these two. And there's the shot from Ska. He continues, shuts down the god. Yeah, what a kill to get on Alu. Out of all the times you wanted to win that duel, it's now here in overtime. 17, 16, you said it already once. 19 is the key number of rounds that you need. Rain pushing out, he gets that headshot on Stewie. You can hardly see anything there, but he still picks it up. And now, Skadoodle creeping in with the AWP. Is he gonna realize there's a second man coming out of apartments? He might not realize AZ's up there, it's a little bit dangerous. It's a four on four. Automatic is gonna go for the flank through T-spawn. Now Rain pushing in, getting this kill on one, but he can't get the kill on Shroud. Still a three on three. Automatic, where are you at? You need to run and get here in time. The bomb is not going down yet, 
And in fact, they're a little bit stuck right now. Phase, they can't really make their way through. Nothing hiding on the other side of the smoke, just making sure they can't push in. And now comes Automatic. This is the big play it's been waiting for. Carrigan down out of the round, and now two on three. They have plenty of time, Phase, but they can't help each other out. Kiyoshima gonna be done as well. And now AC, one versus three, with almost no chance. He's out in the open, there's no cover here, and he goes down to nothing. Automatic, he only got the one kill, but everything was him here. Now he's at 30, tied with Alu. That was all him. All, I mean, working out the timing, the long timing as well, and the fact that his teammates didn't throw it away. I think that's the important thing, is the fact that Shroud stays alive in CT. They stay alive on their on their respective points. Instead of pushing FaZe and pressuring them, they are counting on Automatic to come through and really weaken the FaZe clan defense, because FaZe at that point have no way to get that bomb planted. They were stuck. So very well played there. Good teamwork. Tied up 17-17. It's Skadoodle roasting. Get out. 45 HP left on him. Again, that Molotov makes it so difficult to challenge mid. Your, I, your options are so limited. I appreciate the enthusiasm, but actually standing in the fight to get the kill in the middle is just too much, isn't it? it you know, you've seen Oppers do it, right? Guardian has, has done it in the past, but like, it's, uh, it's, that's that risk that you have to take. It's so hard to get that AWP into play in mid now with all of these smokes and Molotovs going down. Oh, look at Alu. He's actually got nothing boxed in right now. Good flashbang, allowing nothing to cross, and he picks up that kill. Brilliant play coming out of nothing here. With the help of a teammate, very well done. Rain coming out of the A slope as well, trying to see if maybe he could find a kill on someone. That would be a great way to get FaZe back in this round. They need this round. They can't allow nothing. Oh, sorry, they can't allow Cloud9 to get up to. Matching my point here, which is almost happening. Rain sneaking in, there's the kill finally happening. Goes for a second, Rain is unstoppable. Can't get the third one, but that double kill brings them right back in the game. And now it's a three on three. Bomb rotating to A though. And there's the key shot. AZ, what a beast. And Kio will catch Shroud rotating, no surprise there. But AZ, what a monster shot to hit on Stewie. Automatic now, well, you joined the 30 bomb club, but now you're gonna have to do a bit more. You need to get the remaining three. You're walking into an impossible situation now. Keo's holding the angle on connector already, as you guys can see. And well, there's just the triangle. There's so little time to work with, and it doesn't even really matter because Keo's gonna catch him as soon as he makes his way out. 18, 17, phase one round away now from getting the job done, picking up this first map in the group stage. Well, in the group stage, in the tournament, the main event, we'll put it that way. I mean, it, well, this is what's so crazy about the fact that the, the level for the major is starting out at here. One of these teams is going to qualify, and uh, we a lot of them, are, but some of these teams will end up qualifying, and their major run starts here. You know, it'll be a huge trajectory to get all the way into the major, and we're obviously going to have to to sort of make a, a full rundown of all of it. But, but for some of them, the journey starts right now, and it's um, interesting to see what it's going to be like. So far, we're in overtime between Phase and Cloud9, and one more round for Phase, and they will have made it through, in spite of some. Fairly heavy odds stacked against them, it seems. Double I mean, orb as well. We're already on that journey, right? Immortals, they have yet to qualify for a major. They beat Envy, so they're already up 1-0. They'll be playing against another team who's gone 1-0 yesterday. And let's not forget, the next match is CLG and Vega. So, I mean, if whoever wins that is going to be, you know, a great match to get if you're in the winner bracket tomorrow. So Yeah, you're right. Um, it's going to be very interesting what happens with the bracket tomorrow, just depending on today's games. We'll explain that later on, exactly how it works. I'm sure we'll get an update on it. Mid control, push up A slope here. Stewie has to go big in the shadow position. Nothing will do a good kill, almost the second one. But AC is rock solid. It seems like every single round, he picks up at least a double. Now, Stewie, this is your time to shine. Rain being allowed really far in, and he's gonna get the better timing. Stewie, look at the wrong way. Skadoodle gonna be going down. That's AZ picking up the double kill. An automatic in time. He picks up Rain, he goes for the spray. The bomb will be planted. It's a two on three, and Shroud and automatic. Same position put for them, and the bomb is in a great spot right now. They even have a Molotov and AZ. I have no idea how they're gonna defuse this Cloud9. They have the AWP on Alu as well. That's just basically the security, the insurance. He can look into connector, but he can drop down to short and just have a long line onto that bomb plant. Trying to force some kind of reaction, not gonna happen here again. With both headshots in the end. 19-17, the final score here. Unreal that we have to go the distance like this, but they actually manage it in the end. FaZe get the job done, and Cloud9, despite Stewie's, despite Skadoodle, players stepping up, they just aren't able to get it the job done today.
I mean, they were ahead 10-1 at some point, and they end up losing in overtime. That is horrifying if you're a Cloud9. You had this game, you knew you had it, and you still couldn't make it work. But well, what a comeback for FaZe. They were off to a slow start. They made it in the end. We're going to get a full breakdown right after the break. Stay with us. Target on my back, lone survivor last. They got me in the sights. No surrender, no trigger fingers go.